What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zerk, Ken Zerk, Ken Zerk, Ken Zerk, We are back on Horse Party Blood Drive. Um, last episode, we did Chapter 2, and this is literally just the same day. I just stopped the recording and started it back up. But last episode, we we did, we finished Chapter 2. Haruyuki fell to the dark and he went berserk. And Aiko's probably dead now. Let's see what Chapter 3 is. Pain. This is either going to be a lot of chapters or it's just a short game because these chapters have been pretty short. Aside from Satoshi and my other friends who shared the experience with me, there wasn't a single soul in the world who believed that Seiko, Suzumoto, Morishige, and Miss Yui ever existed. And this fact was really taking a toll on me, particularly in regards to Seiko. You alright, Naomi? Yeah, I'm fine. I can't keep worrying my mom forever. I flashed the brightest smile I could muster, though I'm still not sure he bought it entirely. I'm glad to hear that. Keep that chin up, we'll get through this. Thanks. There's no need to be worried about me anymore, okay? That night, all I could manage to do was stand perfectly still and stare at my desk. I was mumbling something, but I don't even know what. My eyes had glazed over. It was like I was in a trance, or maybe I just wanted to be. Not the one who's wrong. I'm not wrong. She's real. It's everyone else. It's everyone else that's crazy. Those who refuse to believe another person, no matter what, can go burn in the fires of hell. If they could look into my heart, they'd see that it's the truth. My friend exists. My friend named Seiko. 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 Ah! I didn't even realize I'd actually started writing. I was at my desk now, writing words with into a notebook. Seiko, Seiko. I kept softly repeating her name to myself, over and over again. The words started to sound foreign in my head, but I couldn't stop saying it. Almost like I forgot her if I did. There was no other sound in the room, just the scratching of pencil on paper. And the heart sounded my voice. Just the word Seiko in all forms. Seiko. Seiko. My voice was getting firmer each time I said it, more demanding. And my writing was growing more feverish, more intense. Seiko. I finally, the pencil broke in half under the strain. I gripped it so hard that it stabbed into my palm. Blood began to drip on the paper. My head was hanging limply, but the rest of my body had stiffened. If anyone had seen me, I bet it would have been quite a sight. I could feel blood rushing to my head, my whole body quivering. I raised my hand from this vigil and realized tears were streaming down my face. What did she look like? My voice was strained, choking back a sentence I'd hope I'd never say. The voice were count there were countless pictures of Seiko drawn in my notebook. But in every one of them, her face was blank. No! I hurled the notebook from my desk. Don't go! Don't leave me! Stay inside me! I don't want you to fade away! I don't want you to fade away! I slammed my hands on the desk with all my might and screamed as loud as my present con constitution would allow. I opened up the photo album on my phone. There was this nagging sensation in the back of my head that I had overlooked something. I was absolutely bawling at this point. My face was a mess, but I had indeed overlooked something. On the bottom right of the screen, there was an icon for image modification. <laughs> After a few menu selections, I found myself adjusting the picture's brightness. Beep, beep. I kept hitting the button and turning it up higher and higher. Slowly, in the very center of the black void that had replaced Seiko's face, I could see something begin to form. I was on a verge of an incredible discovery, filled with a new hope I hadn't felt since just before the incident at the Shinazaki estate. There was still room to increase the brightness. There were countless increments to go before I reached the phone's upper limit. Just kept pressing the button over and over until finally, in the very center of the would-be face, I could make out a very faint pattern that looked like a freehand lettering spelling the name Sachi in it, Hiragana. Oh, I can see it. Was that right? Was I, cer was I certain that's what it said? 
Instinctively, I placed the phone's screen closer to my eye. The limited resolution made it pointless, but I didn't care. It was so close. I was beginning to lose focus, but it still wasn't close enough. I had to make sure that's what it said. I touched it to my forehead as near, near my eye as it could get. At which point the letters latched onto my cornea, literally attached themselves to my- WHAT?! They were there no matter where I looked, I saw them. My vision had gone half white, obscured by the phantom letters. It took only a moment before the pain set in, and it was not an insignificant amount. I collapsed on the ground, hand ineffectively covering my eye. It was absolutely excruciating. That was around when my mom burst through the door. She looked like she was at the end of her rope, like she didn't believe anything was wrong, and I was probably just faking it. She was definitely more annoyed than concerned. With nothing more than a grunt, she grabbed me from behind, pinning my arm so I couldn't hurt myself. I fell backwards onto my rear, unable to resist her restraint. It hurts! Mama, I really hurt! Medicine! I'm telling you to take your medicine! How many times have I been saying before it sinks in? Mom, no, this is different. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts! My eye is on fire! Honestly, why can't you just behave yourself? Every day, the same thing! No, it's not in my eye, Mom, it hurts! Huh, what about your eye? Let me see it! My left eye was glazed over with tears and had gone as bloodshot as an eye can get. And right in the cornea, white blister-like bulges were beginning to form, spelling out Sachi. There was no way my mom could ignore or dismiss that. She quickly stepped back in shock, finally acknowledged me. Her breath quickened, but she didn't say a thing. She just left the room. Mom! It was too late. She was gone. Halfway across the house by the time I called out. Ah, oh, this is just terrible. This is just terrible. Holy crap. I'm trying to like imagine like the like what they would be feeling it like you know just try to get myself emotionally into this and i'm doing that and i i'm, I'm just hurting this is terrible i was sprawled out in the corner of my room like a giant stuffed bear at some point i think i lost consciousness but i'm still not really sure how long have i been sitting here i was starting to feel a little less tense a little more relaxed i looked up at the prospect of actually discerning details in my room, my left eye reacted with a sharp and tense shot of pain. My vision was still half white. My eye. God, it wasn't a dream, was it? It was real. I could feel the pain with every pulse and every part of my body. It was almost unbearable. Yet, Mom, what happened to Mom? She'd run out of the room in shock and obviously had been gone for quite some time. As sick as she was of me, I couldn't imagine she'd leave me to suffer without doing anything. I opened my bedroom door and slowly crept downstairs. I could hear a sound coming from the kitchen, a very specific, very peculiar sound repeating at regular intervals. I did my best to sneak over to the doorway and peek in undetected. And what I saw was my mom sharpening a kitchen knife with intense focus. I had no idea what she planned to do with it, but an irrational fear washed over me. I slowly and silently sneaked my way over to the front entrance. I made sure not I made sure not a peep could be heard from me until I was outside and away from the house. Don't play this Don't play this happy music! Our mom wants to kill us! It was a new morning, bright and early. Satoshi called out to me like I was 12 or something. I'd been in this old, cheap, rundown two-story apartment building for some time now. For a long time now. It may not have been much to look at, but it felt I felt it had a certain charm. 
The Toshi was cradling his school bag in his arms. He waited for me the, in front of my room on the ground floor. On mornings when he wasn't waylaid by Yuka, he would always drop by and invite me to walk to school with him. Originally, he was doing it for my own good. And I'd been known to ditch school a lot, and he figured a friendly offer like this, like his, might get my attendance up a little. Admittedly, it worked. Oh. Yup. I finally made my entrance, or my exit, I suppose. And I'm pretty sure Satoshi must have been really confused, as I had on my shoulders one hell of a backpack, boasting a full-on survival kit, provisions, the works. Oh. Yep, Satoshi was confused, all right. What's all that? It's like you're ready to hike up a mountain or something. Ugh. I slowly, carefully lowered the giant backpack to the ground. Uh, uh, uh no, uh, yeah, it's more like... Actually, before that, will you stop oh, calling man. out to me like you're my mom or something? Yeah, it's not in grade school, school anymore, man. Yeah, huh? Ah, oh. uh, forget it. I actually have some things to do, so I won't be going to school today. Um, yeah, going for a mountain hike, like you said. Sorry to waste your time. Damn it. I didn't think I'd go down so easily last night. I remember taking a hit to the back of the head. Bad enough that I woke up in a hospital or something. Man, what the hell am I doing? Wait for me, Shinazaki, I'm coming. You're hiding something from me again. Huh? I guess it wasn't all that convincing, but even still, I didn't expect Satoshi to seep through me so quickly and easily. I stumbled under his glare. It was almost like I'd just been called out by a newborn baby or like a fawn. Dude was way too innocent for his own good. Can't fault him on his instincts. One of his biggest selling points, I guess. He's really good at empathizing with others and helping them get over their problems. Come on, out with it. You can't hide anything from me. Uh, no, I guess not. Ayumi's face appeared in the back of my mind. Shinazaki said she didn't want Satoshi and the others to get involved any more than they already were. So I can't very well tell him I'm trying to find Aiko so I could go back there. Is that something to do with Heavenly Host, doesn't it? Huh? Damn, he was on today. That sure seemed like a yes reaction to me. How the hell did you know? Uh, damn. Damn it, I'm terrible at this. I covered my mouth, but it was too late. I'd already confirmed it. Well, you've got a bunch of talismans in your back. Uh, I did have a lot of talismans with me. I bought them at the convenience store. Didn't exactly pack smartly enough to hide them. I certainly wasn't going to win any awards for stealth. Didn't that place fall apart, though? Please don't tell me you're still standing. Yeah. No. You saw it collapsing around us when we escaped. You saw it too, it's rubble. Until she stared deeply into my eyes as if evaluating my answer for any possible deception. This time it seemed I succeeded in fooling you. Yeah, you're right. Besides, Sachiko doesn't exist there anymore. So I can't imagine talismans would have any effect. There's no way to get back there anyway. Exactly. I was just gonna research it a little. I wasn't gonna do anything dangerous. Alright, that's fine then. But if that changes, make sure you don't do it on your own. I've been telling Naomi the same thing. The worst thing in the world is not knowing what happened to someone. I thought I was in a clear, but Satoshi suddenly had a puzzled look on his face. He reached over to my backpack and pulled out one of the talismans I'd lazily stuck into the front pouch. Do these things really work? He was looking over like an appraiser or something. Why wouldn't he just leave me alone? How should I know? People used to, people used to use sardine heads to ward off evil. This was probably just as effective. I yanked the talisman out of Satoshi's hand and crammed it into my front pocket of the school blazer. Man, I haven't heard you talk like that in forever. You're like an old man sometimes, Yoshiki. Shut up, man. Either way, first things first. You're going to school today. With this, Satoshi grabbed my sleeve. But why? Because your attendance is low enough, and Miss Kuwan said she'd 
help you make it up before class today. Probably with a quiz or something. I don't give a crap about that. They can hold me back a year if they have to. This is not a time for school. I take it this has to do with Shinazaki then. This guy's psychic? He hadn't been wrong all morning. Whatever happened to the way. You can tell me about it at school. Come on, let's go. You can leave the backpack right here. Seems to Toshi wasn't going to take no for an answer. Yo, Satoshi, seriously, stop. I get it, okay? Just come on, get your hands off of me. You want me to be honest with you? I'll be honest with you. Sure you will. Come on! <laughs> Oh, boy. Good, good morning. Hey. You're lucky, Kishinuma. Getting off with the 15 minute quiz. I hope you're ready for it. Whatever. Yoshiki has been made aware of the situation. You seriously don't have time for this, you know, but here I am. Let's just get this over with so I can get the hell out of here. It was great of you to come. And let's be off on to the classroom, shall we? I'm fine right here. Just bring me the quiz. Don't be stupid, Yoshiki. Look, this is no time. There's no time to argue. There's some place I absolutely have to be. I stuck my hand in my pocket and took out a mechanical pencil. They were going to force me to do this, I need to shave off every second I could. As I removed the pencil, the talisman I shoved in there earlier fell to the ground. I need to hurry and find that spirit item fanatic or else Shinazaki could be. Spirit item fanatic? Are you talking about Aiko Niwa? Yeah, that's her. Something happened to Shinazaki? Wait, are you trying to tell me she somehow went back to Heavenly Host? Yes! Why didn't you say so sooner? Because you weren't listening to me! All you did was yank, yank, yank on my damn shirt! What's this about I and Heavenly Host? Oh, it's nothing. Wait. Ai-chan? Ai-chan? Hold on, think of it. Your last name is Niwa. That's right. The person you just mentioned, Aiko Niwa, is my sister. I call her Ai. Miss Kuan, I'd like to meet with Aiko. Do you know where to find her? At this hour, I'd imagine she's in school. So she was acting rather strangely last night. Do you live with her, Miss Kuan? I do. This would have been after Shinazaki and I met with her. How was she acting exactly? Like, what was strange about it? Well... I may have said something about you. Uh, this is rather awkward. Okay, and then what? Well, let's see. She was holding two small blue stones in her hand, almost cradling them, in fact. Bingo! That's it, she had another pair. But this is our chance. Miss Kuan, do you know for sure that Aiko went to school today? She looked rather protrude as she left the house last night. And she wasn't home when I got up this morning. I made some breakfast and waited for her, but I wound up eating it all. If she used those stones on her own, that's the end of it. There's no way to go after Shinazaki. Thank you, Ms. Kuan. I'll be sure to bring him back. As Satoshi turned to leave, he caught a glimpse of Nakashima standing on the school roof at the wrong side of the guard rail looking tired and worn. There was no spark in her eyes, no awareness. It looked almost as if she were sleepwalking. Naomi! This is bad!
I tried to pick myself up and look around. But I couldn't. But I could only move my neck. Everything was dark. And the only sign of my surroundings was an unpleasant, vaguely organic noise filling my ears. I felt in some way restrained. What's going on? As my eyes adjusted to the dim light of the room, I could see that I was blanketed by red flesh. It was as if the floor had come to life and it was absorbing me into its collective. <laughs> this is disgusting! <laughs> God! <laughs> I focused my strength and was finally able to break free from my binding. Bits of red matter flying away from my body as I tore it through it to freedom. I was absolutely soaked. However, with the strange vicious fluid and chunks of meat were clinging fast on my skin and clothes. The blanket of flesh on the ground was now bubbling out a murky red liquid from all the spots I torn in my escape. As violently as, as, violently as if a faucet had been turned to full. What the hell was that? Oh, I was in tears, trying as hard as I could to wipe the viscera from my body as I watched. However, a chunk I had been trying to shake free from the back of my hand just dissolved away. <laughs> Aside from the murmurs of the flesh blanket, the room was deathly silent and lit only by a faint blue glow streaming from a nearby window. This is still heavenly host for sure. The entity resembling Mayu was charging at me from the depths of the darkness. <laughs> it was all in my head, a flashback. She wasn't after me now, but she definitely had been. That was really Susumoto, wasn't it? The tears were pouring out of my eyes by this point. I could do nothing to hold them back. Can I really do it? Can I bring them back? Can I even really find the Book of Shadows in this endless darkness? Maybe I shouldn't have come. I crouched on the floor trying to gather my thoughts and noticed my cell phone was lying on the ground beside me. That wasn't all, a circular design was carved into the floor perfectly round, as if traced by a compass, with the fleshy goo I'd been trapped in more or less centered inside. What in the... actually come to think of it? Wasn't I about to get attacked by some monster with an axe? I checked myself over for injuries, there were none. Or at least none caused by an axe. Oh my goodness. Ah, I guess I must have skinned my knee when I tripped. If memory serves, and if the floor plan hasn't changed too much, the infirmary should be right here. Maybe I can catch my breath there for a minute. Are you sure you want to? The hard wooden clops of my footsteps gave way to a softer, squishier series of plops. Taken aback by this sudden change, I looked down, terrified at what I might be walking in. As I feared, it looked awfully biological. Huge swaths on the floor were coated in what looked like internal organs, moving and swaying and pulsing in a sick rhythm. This is really disturbing. What is it? I raised my foot and found a seaweed-like substance that closely resembled a network of blood vessels stuck to the bottom of my shoe. There wasn't anything like this in Heavenly Host before. It's like the whole school is being swallowed by something. I wonder what those are. They look a lot like the occult symbols we found in the basement of the Shinazaki estate. Only different. A little more demonic, I guess. Whatever they are, I'm getting shivers just by looking at them. Calm down, Ayumi. Just focus on what you have to do. The good chance that this girl has the Book of Shadows. She looks a lot like Yuki. 
If I talk to her and tell her what's happening, I'm sure she'll give me the book. Just before I passed out, I thought I saw her. She had a very different aura than before. I should leave a candle here. Maybe Misuto will see it. Hopefully Misuto will see it. I might have matches. I wonder if there are any nearby. To come to shock of removal on removal of spine. Catchphrase was, in this world of interesting things, let's be interesting. That? I'm gonna be honest. That's kinda hard. I was about to say, aren't we supposed to be resting, but I don't think we can rest and uh, next to a corpse. This is blood and it's fresh. There should be stairs leading to the third floor over that way. Oh snap. We might run into Aiko. Okay. Break that. I'm getting a little bit better at catching the trip wires. I wanna see what's down this way. Let's see what's over here. I do not trust this. Oh, what the heck is that? Hold on. This is Mayu, isn't it? Though there's a still a massive blood stain here. Mayu Suzumoto's remains are no longer present. Yeah, that was Mayu. Oh, uh, the deaths have been moved and the trail continues here. So that monster must have gone upstairs. Guess we're following little buddy. Well, big buddy actually. It ain't Yoshikazu, is it? Oh, this is the bathroom. This is the bathrooms, right? Don't be displayed, vandalized with the graffiti. Oh, this is the black hair. Bloodstains lead here, which means Yuki is most likely inside, along with that axe-wielding giant. I don't know this number. Hello? Still alive, huh? You, where are you? Why are you such a wuss? What? All you ever think about is how much you regret everything. If there were a voltage meter attached to me, it would have spiked at that moment. Never before has one person been able to anger me so quickly and effortlessly. But what the hell is your problem? How can you just leave me by myself like this? Tell me where you are right now. No need to get so pissy. I'm looking for you too. We'll run into each other in here at some point. Huh? That's your best answer you can give me? This is heavenly hopes. It's a jumbled mess of dimensions. We may never see each other again for all you know. Oh yeah, that's true. And I'm the one with the stone. So if push comes to shove, I guess you'll wind up getting left behind. Forget about that for a minute. Though, so, have you seen all the demonic looking symbols and markings here? I'm pretty sure I have. Those writings amplify some kind of power throughout the entire nirvana. 
something big. Some kind of power. What do they signify exactly? I'm not really sure on the details, but I can tell you they're black magic. The kind used by the Martubas. There's definitely something going on in this school, so be careful. You'll be fine, though. We'll meet again somehow or another, and then you can use these scones and head back to reality. Wasn't exactly the ideal spot to cut off in the conversation. I panicked and tried to call back. Be careful, he says. Be careful of what? Mishita never picked up. You gave me so little to go on. She about to kill herself with a smile on her face. Seiko, how are you? We used to eat lunch here together all the time, remember? I held my hand out in front of me and looked down at my phone. All my attention was on a little glowing screen. My inbox was filled with old messages from Seiko. It's like time is frozen for me, you know? Without you by my side, I'm scared. Too scared to even take a single step. Stretched out beneath my feet, I could see the roof of the connecting corridor on the first floor. It was a five-story building. No surviving or fall from this height. I want to see your face again. Just one more time. I don't want to forget you. Satoshi? Miss Kuan? You really scared me there for a second. Ah! Nami! Oh, that was really close. <sighs> you thought I was going to jump? Uh, sorry, I wasn't planning on it, honest. You certainly gave us quite a start. What were you doing out there? Seiko and I used to hop the railings here. See over there? We'd lay on the on top of the power box together and I just wanted to remember those days to remember her. Okay. Thank God it was just a misunderstanding. Is something wrong with your eye? Oh, it happened last night. May I take a look? My cornea was etched with indistinct white dots. To the untrained eye, they probably looked like a random blistering. But on closer inspection, one could easily make out that they were actually letters. Is this from a curse, perhaps? Are you familiar with things like that? I mean, are you familiar with things like that? Yes, you can say that. My company has some dealings with this sort of thing. May I ask what happened last night? I was looking at a picture on my phone really close and the letters got stuck to my eye. Was it a spirit photograph thing? Do you still have it? I wasn't sure I was ready to show this strange woman a photo of Seiko who was, by all rights, non-existent in this world. I considered it for a moment, but ultimately decided to risk the, the risk outweighed any possible reward. Uh, no, I don't have it anymore. I see. That's good. Photographs depicting things that which, which don't belong on this plane will have negative effects on the viewer when seen. It's always best not to save them. Things that don't belong on this plane, huh? Though it was obvious Miss Kuan didn't intend that as an insult, those of us who survived Heavenly Host ordeal couldn't help but have our hearts sink at the harshness of the phrase. Instantly, my depression intensified. Here, I have some eye drops and an eye patch. It may be a little uncomfortable, but do keep it on. If it's just an irregular infection, it should heal up in no time. Satoshi's eyes widened as Miss Kuan pulled a manner of shocking objects from her bag. Cursing for the eye drops and eye patch she supposedly happened to have on hand. He also seemed transfixed by the company logo. <laughs> PL Promotions. Thank you, Miss Kuan. 
You should go home for the day, Nakashima, and get some rest. If you don't, you might inadvertently take in something else. Miss Kuan clearly knew more than she was letting on. I was a little taken back by this whole encounter. The expression on her face was not that of someone playing around, nor that of a teacher, but that of a professional giving a deathly serious prognosis. It reminded me of the look Shinazaki would give whenever she sensed danger. Reading between the lines, it was evident that Miss Kuan's sensitivity to the supernatural was well honed. Toshi and I were both looking at her somewhat agape, and I think we realized in that moment that this was someone we could trust. I'll walk her home then. Oh, but you have class, don't you? I'll be happy to see her off safely, if that's alright with you, Nakashima. May I escort you? No. No! I will not go home! What happened, Naomi? I won't! I just won't! Not there! Miss Kuan's eyes moved downward a bit, surveying my body. I wasn't sure what she was doing at first, but then I realized she was observing the state of my uniform. Namely, it was in a mess it was a mess of wrinkles. As if I hadn't changed out of it for far longer than one would expect. Could it be you run away from home? Perhaps you've been on a run since last night's incident? If I go home, if I go home, she'll give me medicine, and I'm scared. I probably sounded like a little girl at the doctor's office, frightened of the needle. It may have been the first time Satoshi realized just how much Seiko's loss still bothered me. I was in shock and denial, and I'd been trying so hard to play it off. Alright, I understand. You'll come to my place then, and I'll contact your parents from there. Let's stop by the classroom and pick up your bag, then we'll be off, okay? And Satoshi, I want you to do your best in today's classes. Nami! Yoku. I hope you feel better. Thanks. Yoshiki sneaking around in pain by himself. Yoshiki sneaking around by himself. Shinazaki's in pain. And Naomi's suffering just as much. You gotta show us why 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 you got why you got the basic main character build, bro. At this rate, we're all gonna lose our minds. I have to do something. Sorry, Miss Kuan. Yoshiki. And get in there, Yoshiki. This was no time for schoolwork. We must have gone to Polonia Academy High School to meet with Aiko Niwa. I saved. Monami, I understand that those two are your best friends, but you mustn't lose faith. Their families place missing persons reports, so I'm absolutely sure that Sainoki and Uwe will come back before you know it. Keep that chin up. Hi, Mr. Shimizu. As soon as the teacher was out of sight, the girl's eyes narrowed. She stared after him with a look of utter contempt. It had to be Magari Mizuki. Why are all adults such dumb shits? She followed this statement with a sigh that seemed to say, I'm so much better than everyone. And then bingo! From her skirt pocket, she withdrew the Ever After Stone. Easing people's words is all it took to make the world spin. We'd never have to lift a finger now, would we? She was coyly playing with the stones as she said this, fitting them together at different angles in her hand. Yes, can I help you? She hadn't turned around. She just somehow seemed to sense my presence. I stepped out from behind the bench into her line of sight. Gar then flashed me the iciest stare I'd ever seen. I'm not usually intimidated by that sort of thing. Even now I had to make a concerted effort not to look away. What is this person? Hi, you're Ma Magari, right? I heard from some other students that you're acquainted with Aiko Niwa. 
as well as a, a pretty famous girl named Naho. Why, uh, do you have those stones exactly? Shouldn't they be in Aiko Niwa's possession? I figured I might as well jump in the whole hog, though not without bracing myself first. I knew that question couldn't exactly lead me anywhere good. Sure enough, her response was almost immediate. I'll kill you. Huh? What? Pursue this line of questioning and I'll fucking kill you. This is none of your business, so how about you leave now? Or shall I call a teacher and report that there's a trespasser? She certainly wasn't messing around. Nonetheless, I'd come too far to back down now. Despite her threats, I knew I had to keep pushing. Yeah, huh? Are you going to Heavenly Host? To the Nirvana? If so, could you take me with you? Huh? I have a friend who's there right now and... Before I could get another word in, a giant scythe literally appeared in her hand out of nowhere. Just like that, I couldn't move a muscle. She had me completely restrained. I'm seriously going to kill you. Forget your friend and get lost. It's your last chance. The play glinted majestically in the light of the sun. As I looked up at it, in her other hand, it was her other hand that really did me in. Using the heel of her palm, she flung me backward with incredible force. There was a loud, sudden metallic. There was a loud, sudden metallic sound at the, as the back of as as my back struck the bench behind me. Her form was unbelievably precise. Thank! My momentum caused me to pivot over the back rest and flop down to the, onto the ground below. I became acutely aware of every muscle and bone in my body as a jolt of intense pain fired through all of them. The wind wasn't just knocked out of me, it was obliterated. <coughs> I gagged and choked for a while longer, but eventually regained my ability to breathe normally and within my composure. <laughs> I forced myself up with some effort, but my guard was nowhere to be seen. Damn it, seriously, what is she? Her and that Misato bastard. I was in a complete daze. I'd always thought of myself as being able to hold my own in a fight, but this was twice now that I've been laid out with almost no effort. Why am I so weak? I have to find a way to open this door. Forget that, I need a save point. I am tired. What is that? This heavenly host is definitely different from the one I remember. Outside the window, there was a sort of bizarre statue, clearly visible in the pale blue light. Yui, Suzumoto, Shinazar, Horoshigi. If any of you are still here, please lend me your strength. I swear I'll do everything I can to bring you all back. Remember these? They're my story time, they're my scary time candles. This is to let you know I'm all here. That's the end of this episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read them all time in the next episode. Man, this is definitely a game. Um, The first course part, it was amazing. Book of Shadows was great. But I really like where this is going. I'm not gonna lie. I hear a lot of people say that like, Horse Party fell off with Blood Drive. And you know, I just feel like it was a genre thing. It couldn't have been a game thing. It had to have been a genre thing. Because this game so far is great and I'm loving it. But I gotta go, I'm tired, I have a headache. Um, and I'm hungry. Peace out. I love you guys. Tap into the next episode. Uh, say hi to Rena. Well, say bye to Rena. <laughs>